Hey, what's up guys, Radku here, back with another Yu-Gi-Oh! video, and today is going to be a Print Kids deck profile. Now, this deck is really, really cool. It's one of the most consistent decks in the game, and recently got hit on the ban list with Mia Mia Mew being hit to one copy. Now, this is a very, very big hit for the deck, as this deck no longer has the insane follow-up it used to. However, the deck is still able to recur its advantage very well and is still one of the most consistent decks you can play in this metagame. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Starting things off, I play three copies of every single Prank Kids. With this list, it's a fusion build, so I wanted to maximize on the amount of Prank Kids cards I can have access to. So just to run through their effects, basically each one of the Prank Kids if used for a link or fusion material for a prank kids monster you get to summon one from hand or deck now this allows for insane advantage loops that are what made the deck competitive so fan uh they usually all have or they all have one effect before that needs to resolve in order for them to uh summon it but basically fancy's effect is that you can uh send one prank from deck to graveyard this is actually really important as it allows you to play around nibiru very well uh dropsies allows you to gain a thousand life points. Lampsies allows you to sucker your opponent into losing in time by inflicting 500 points of damage. This card is so annoying. I absolutely hate it, especially when the deck was so uh, consistently recurrable with a 3 meow. But the thing is that now the deck isn't as annoying, even though you can still continue to loop Lampsies to burn your opponent, which is honestly kind of annoying in time. But considering that we're on DB. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then Roxy's allows you to banish your card from your hand to draw one. Um, all of them allow you to float. All of them are really good, and I like to maximize on, on them because they allow for huge consistency. For the hand traps, I play three copies of Ash, two copies of Skullmeister, and one copy of Imperm. Uh, the, er, pardon, two copies of Imperm. Now, these are mainly played because they're cross-out targets, but also they're some of the most impactful hand traps in the format. Ash Blossom is really good against just all decks, and is one of the things that can stop this deck in its track, so it easily allows us to play around with cross-out. Um, then Skullmeister is also one of the cards that is very, very good against all the top decks, save maybe be sword soul but even then they have graveyard effects so the thing is that you can continually use this to stop your opponent as well as stop them from doing the same to you uh, and then imperm is just generically good against sword soul flunder um and tri brigade which are all some of the best decks right now so honestly it's really good for the spells i play uh one copy of instant fusion and one copy of one for one one for one allows you to play without using your normal summon which is really really good since this deck doesn't necessarily need its normal summon in order to do its place it just Needs to get a monster on field and that's really all you need to do uh, i play one copy instant fusion because this card's insane it allows you to summon any of these two which allows you to do some really really crazy plays Rocket Ride allows you to summon on your turn, while um, Washer allows you to summon on your opponent's turn, which can create some pretty good loops. Uh, then uh, I play two copies of Mystic Mind. Now, don't don't hate me, okay? With no, uh, with little to no recovery with this deck, aside from putting Meow Meow back with Prank Kids Prank, um, the thing is that you use Mystic Mind very, very well. The thing is that what you can do is you're allowed to activate the cost of cards during... Uh, um, your uh or your even under mystic mind so what you end up doing is tributing the bow wow when your opponent tries to do anything to add back your cards and then you're able to stick mystic mind on the field on your turn while being able to resolve bow wow get your cards back and then fuse when you need to depending on how much your opponent does so this allows you to stick your opponent under mystic mind and allows you to freely move throughout it depending on how many cards your opponent has which is very 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 good. This deck is one of the very few decks aside from Sky Striker that can effectively utilize this card, and I really, really like it, despite how toxic it is. Uh, I played three copies of Prank Kid's Place. Um, this card is also really good. Uh, it allows, it's basically just free advantage. Uh, I max out on all the Prank Kid's cards you can play because this 
not only gives you 15 ways to start your, or pardon, 16 with one for one to start out your combo, but it also is very consistent because it allows you to easily use your cards in hand for fusion material in case your cards get hit. Uh, I played three copies of uh, Plant Kids Pandemonium. This card isn't uh, once per turn, and it allows you to just fusion summon for free on your opponent's turn, which allows you to play around stuff like droplets, which is very good. I played three copies of Cross Out Designator. This card is really good, especially in tandem with Ash and Skullmeister, which are some of the most impactful cards in uh, to stop this deck, since this deck can play around uh, Nibiru really well. Uh, Polymerization, uh, just really, really good because it allows you to play around cards. Uh, Desires is good because we max out on all our cards, meaning that we don't really care if we banish anything. As long as we don't banish... Uh, all of any of these three were okay and honestly with one any of these 15 cards being full combo it's not likely that you will banish all of them then I played two copies of Prank Kids Pranks. People used to only play one copy of this, but I feel that it's necessary now to play two copies because one, decks can out it really easily nowadays since the main form of removal is destruction with DPE being one of the best cards. So having another copy of this to put some cards back, especially the Meow Meow Mew, um, allows you to do some really, really good plays and allows for adaptability. And then uh, I already went through Imprint. So that's it for the main deck going into the extra deck. Could play one copy of meow i wish this card could be at two because honestly that would hit the deck um but it would mean that they can't go into the third or fourth turn which is honestly not bad I played three copies of Dodo Doodle Doo. This card is really, really good. This is one of your best link monsters. Uh, this allows you to search uh, for your spell cards, so you can get access to place if you have fusion spells already. You can access Pandemonium, and you can access Pranks, which is just insane. Uh, honestly, uh, this could be cut to two, but I hi I highly suggest playing three. Uh, I played two copies of Bow Wow Bark. Uh, this card uh, used to only be played at one, but I kind of like it because you want more fusion or uh, you. You want more link monsters now since uh, meow meow is at one you, it means you can't rely on just summoning a monster and then linking off sometimes you'll have some remainder cards since usually your end board is just any of these three plus um the battle butler so honestly you can have one of this and then uh or you can have a uh, two of this and then t uh, three of these which allow you to stay in the grind game even with one of these i play one copy of rip roaring roaster uh this card is good for back uh, never cut one co the one copy of this card. This card comes up, and, but the thing is that it allows you to also play on your opponent's turn depending on what deck they're playing. So it's honestly really important, and I very highly suggest keeping this card. I play two copies of Rocket Ride and one copy of Weather Washer. Uh, honestly, like this is the optimal lineup. Rocket Ride is the one you want to go into very often, um, and it's what's accessible with Instant Fusion. It allows you to just summon on your turn which is really really good that uh then uh it allows you to play through disruption uh then weather washer is just another uh name target basically uh, i played two copies of battle butler because what ended up happening in a lot of my games was that they managed to banish one copy of my battle butler and then i didn't have anything to go into even if i had all the materials and a polymerization i just didn't have any payoff to it because i only had one battle butler so even though like what we used to do is we used to use uh, link advantage to grind out games and then go into big beaters i decided that um for more late game plays two copies of battle butler was mandatory uh, i play one copy of nightmare unicorn and access code and then i play one copy of totally awesome because usually you can just stick this onto your end board with double uh dropsies which is really really good it allows you to uh, play more on your opponent's turn depending on how much disruption you have uh and honestly it's just really good but that's it for the main or er, for the deck let's go into the combos so basically, if you have access to any one Prank Kids monster, you have full combo. This includes having access to Prank Kids Place, which can allow you to bait disruption or just add the last card you need to hand. So with this case, I'm going to use Roxy's because this is the worst Prank Kids card you can have in your hand. But either way, it's still going to be full combo. So you're going to start off by normal summoning Roxy's and link it off for the Meow Meow Mew. So the thing is that later turns, you're going to use the uh, Meow Meow or the uh, Dodo 
it'll do to add the uh, prank kids pranks to hand so you can put this back into your extra deck because you want to save your resources very well so then you can use the effect of roxy's banish one card from your hand to draw one i just banished one from top special summon the dropsies um, honestly, you can special summon any of them. Just make sure that you have one of either Dropsies, Fansies, or Lampsies left at the end of your combo on field. So then you're going to link to for Dodo Doodle Doo. Then you'll use the effect of Dodo and you'll use the effect of Dropsies to gain a thousand life points. And that's time in the round. But then you can special summon Lampsies. Then you can uh, link both off for the Bow Wow Bark. Then you can use the effect of Lampsies to summon the Fanzies from deck. Now the thing, this is always the setup you want to have. You want to have any of these three uh, Prank Kids monsters on field and Bow Wow Bark. So the thing is that then you can set this card. I forgot to do it. Um, so then you can on your opponent's turn activate the effect of bow wow bark tributing it to add back the lampsies and the dropsies then you can activate the set prank kids uh pandemonium to fuse the three to summon the battle butler which requires those three specifically but then you can just use the effect to float into uh all of your cards so you can just dump any random one for fansies to summon three from deck now usually um what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to wait for the opportune time to do this. Sometimes it's during the end of the main phase. Sometimes it's during the main phase too. But you have to realize that that setup is how you win games. So then uh, on your, your turn again, you can overlay the uh, dropsies for a totally awesome. This is how this deck has such easy access to it. Because in later game, you have a lot more prank kids monsters on field. Or you could uh, instead um, summon a different one other than dropsies link to the lampsies and the dropsies off for a dodo doodle do add the pandemonium and then summon the, the dropsies that would have been more efficient and gotten you access to your pan or your pranks which could have put back your meow meow mew and your dodo along with any of your other prank kids monsters so that way you can continually loop advantage and end up out grinding your opponent which is what this deck excels in but yeah that's pretty much it for the deck please like subscribe share comment let me know what you thought and let me know if there's anything would change about the list my list isn't exactly very conventional but the thing is that there isn't a ton to change about it so i figured i'd put my own personal spin on it and see how it did and it's honestly been faring pretty well but yeah that's pretty much it and i'll see you in the next Yu-Gi-Oh video peace guys